Welcome, welcome. Welcome to another video about the CIA exam and all about being a certified internal auditor. So go ahead and leave your comments in the chat section and say hi to me. I see one person's here, a few people are on. Hope everyone's doing well today. So I have exciting and interesting news because there are some changes that are being made for, in, for internal auditors, specifically certified internal auditors today. And I'll share that information to you all. I'm gonna share my screen shortly. All right, so today we will talk about how your CIA designation can be revoked. It can be revoked. The IIA has recently actually put out some new policy changes surrounding the continuing professional education or CPE updates for reporting them each year. So there are new CPE reporting requirements that the IIA has published for 2023. And so today we will discuss that. If you're ready in the chat, let me know. Let me know if you're ready in the chat. We're going to talk about the 2023 updates to the Institute of Internal Auditors policy for CPE reporting. And as you all know, I became a, CP, a CIA this August in 2022. And so this is really important because I need to know what I need to do to stay in compliance and to, to remain active and to not have my designation revoked. But yes, if you do not comply, your 2023 reporting requirements have changed. So you need to make sure that you're abreast of the situation. And we'll go ahead and get into that right now. So if you go to the IIA's actual website, which is www.biia.org, you will see that the reporting policy for reporting continuing professional education has, in fact, changed. And they made a more short, a shorter press release on the website as well, which you can you can go to that to find out more information. And I also put it in my description box after I'm done presenting this. But the Institute of Internal Auditors announces updates to continuing professional education policy. And note, and note that this will take effect. And as of September 1st of next year, of 2023. So this will take effect September 1st of 2023. And this was put out by the IIA November 9th, 2022. So that's a press release from the IIA, but let's go into the actual policy to get the actual key information. And Ashish asked me, am I from the U.S. or Canada? I'm actually in the U.S. right now. I am in the U.S. And in order to chat, you have to be a subscriber. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel. And thanks for joining. So let's talk about this reporting policy change. So first of all, why is it important to actually get your CPE every year? And why does the IIA even ask you to report your CPE annually? Well, it's important to keep up with the developing trends and information policy, policy changes that are in the industry and in our accounting and auditing profession, period, because that's what the IIA trains us to do as certified internal auditors. And that's what we know is going to add value to society and to the organizations that we serve. So we make sure that we keep pace with those developing trends that 
that develop and are established as the profession changes. And it's just important for us to keep our, our training updated, right? So training is essential for knowing new accounting methods or knowing new ways to audit or knowing what government regulations may prescribe to us, may be prescribed to us as we perform our day-to-day -day tasks and duties. They enhance our knowledge, our skills, our competencies through continuing professional development. And as a CIA, you're supposed to renew your certification each year to demonstrate your commitment to keeping knowledge current and to keep your skills sharp. So that is why the IIA asks you to commit to continue education requirements each year, each year. So what exactly is changing? And I'll zoom in for you so you can see better. But what exactly is changing here? So the most significant policy change is that once a certification is expired, it cannot be reinstated. I'll repeat that. Once the certification is expired, it cannot be reinstated. So that means that if you are currently a certified internal auditor, you already have your designation. You've passed all three parts of the CIA exam, right? That means you cannot miss, you cannot go three years without reporting your continuing professional education or CPE without your certification being revoked. So let's say that you are you became a CIA in 2022. If you don't report your CPE for 2023, for 2024, and 2025, that means that the IIA, the Institute of Internal Auditors, can revoke your certified internal auditor designation. That's what that means. So this is a big deal. And this, this is a high stakes area for people who work hard to become certified internal auditors like I have. And you've worked hard to enter this profession and to get credibility as a certified professional. So if you skip those three years without reporting your CPE, you will have to reapply to the certification program and pass all three parts of the exam again to become a certified internal auditor again. So I'm not making this up. It's in black and white on the IA's website. You can go to www.biia.org. You can actually see the web address here. You can see it there. But yeah, this is not a joke. They are willing to revoke your license if you do not report your CPE for three consecutive years or longer. And so any surplus of CPE acquired during the year can be used for the next year's CPE reporting requirement. So what does that mean, becoming bossy? <laughs> That means that you can have, let's say that you obtain 60 hours of continuing professional education credit in 2022. Well, really, it's effective in 2023, so let's say 2023. If you get 60 hours of CPE credit in, in 2023, the requirement for CIAs is only 40 hours, right? So that means that you have 20 hours of extra CPE that you acquire during the year. So in the first bullet, it says any surplus of CPE acquired may be used for the following calendar year reporting cycle. So 20 hours can be rolled over for certified internal auditors to the next year's requirements. So if I get 60 hours in 2023 and I only get 20 hours in 2024, that means that I can apply this the extra 20 hours of surplus of CPE that I acquired in 2023, I can apply those to 2024 and still be in good standing, right? Another change that has been made according to this policy change is that there's now a grace period 
not it's no longer one year. Now it is two years, right? So if you don't report your CPE for two years, you're still in good standing. They will not revoke your designation. However, if you go longer than three years or more, your certification will be revoked because you did not report your continuing professional education as required by the Institute of Internal Auditors. So this is a big change from the current reporting policy from the IIA because currently, in 20, as of 2022, you can't even go one year without reporting, without not reporting your CPE. If you go one year without reporting your CPE, they could ask you to be reinstated. So you have to apply to be reinstated. But now they're saying if you go three years or longer as of 2023, now you will actually have to take all three of your exams again. You will have to take all of those exams again to become a certified internal auditor. So this is breaking news that there are major changes happening. And below, they have a summary table of all the changes that are made. And on the IIA's website, on the Institute of Internal Auditors website, you have the, the new annual certification renewal policy. And you also have the current CPE policy as of 2022. So feel free to go to their website and check those out. But I'm going to go over a summary of changes that are now going to be in effect as of September 1st, 2023 due to these CPE reporting policy changes. So in this column, we have how the policy stands right now. What is the IIA's CPE reporting policy as of today in 2022 compared to what will the new policy be as of September 1st, 2023? So, Certified certification reinstatement. As of today, if you are a certified internal auditor in expired status, you can reinstate your CIA designation by reporting required hours. So you can easily be reinstated as a CIA if you report your required hours, even if you are in expired status. So for anyone who is currently not up to date with their reporting of their continuing professional education, I highly suggest that you go in before the end of the year, and especially before September 1st, 2023, I highly recommend that you go ahead and report your CPE hours. Make sure that you have at least 40 hours of continued professional education to report to the IIA because next year, as of September 1st, 2023, reinstatement will no longer be offered, will no longer be offered starting January 1st, 2024. Individuals will be moved into a revoked status in order to recertify as a certified internal auditor. That means you must register for all three CIA exam parts again, CIA part one, CIA part two, and CIA part three. So this is serious business here. Serious business. The next change. Before there was no carryover of CPE. That means that the current policy stated that every year you had to get your 40 hours of CPE. No questions, right? If you got 50 hours of CPE, let's say you took an extra training, that did not apply to next year's CPE reporting requirement. That means that even if you go above and beyond, you get more than 40 hours of CPE, you could only have credit for 40 hours in the current policy as of 2022. Look on the right side. 
as of September 1st, 2023, if you get more than 40 hours of the required continued professional education during a calendar year, those extra hours may be used for the following calendar year reporting cycle, up to 20 hours maximum for certified internal auditors and up to 10 hours maximum for other Institute of Internal Auditor designations. So if you have 60, you earn 60 hours, let's say you acquire 60 hours of continued professional education in 2023, that means that you report those 60 hours, 40 hours would apply for 2023, and an extra 20 hours would be carried forward to 2024's CPE reporting requirement. So that's huge news. That's great news for certified internal auditors because I always, I know if you're a certified public accountant, you know about this. You always try to get above the 40 hour requirement of CPE so that you can be ahead for the following year because you never know what financial hardship you might encounter. You never know how the economy may be so that your company may not be able to sponsor you anymore. You may be in between jobs. So maybe you won't have a company to actually pay for your trainings, right? There may not be any trainings that you're particularly interested in. So it's important to stay ahead and to really take advantage of this surplus CPE incentive that the IIA is offering us. So I highly recommend if you are CIA, even though the minimum requirement is just to get 40 hours as of 2022, the requirement is 40 hours of CPE. I highly recommend that you get at least 60 hours so that you can be ahead of the game for the next year's requirements. I hope that makes sense to everyone. If you have questions, make sure that you join us in the chat room. Join in the chat room and I will answer your questions. I know this is a lot of new news at one time. And this was just released in early November. It was just released in early November. So make sure that you answer or ask your questions in the chat room. And I will answer those questions for you. Or just say hi. Say hi to me and that'll be great as well. But let's get back to the changes that are happening for the CPE policy. And as I mentioned earlier, currently there is a grace status of one year. So currently, if you do not get your 40 hours of CPE as required by the IIA for one year, if you don't report it for one year, you currently will go into an expired status because you have not obliged with the IIA's reporting requirements. That is the current policy, right? But next year, effective 2023, you won't have an additional, you'll have two years. You'll have a two-year grace period in which you will not be punished for not reporting CPE to the IIA, right? So they're giving you two years of relief to alleviate the pain of having to report CPE. But during that third year, if you still don't report during that third year, then that means that they will and they are able to revoke your CIA designation. So when is the policy changing? As I mentioned, the policy is changing effective September 1st, 2023. The new annual certification renewal policy goes into effect for all Institute of Internal Auditor certification holders and current candidates. 2023. That means that in 2023, if you go three consecutive years without reporting your CPE, your continued professional education, you will have your certification revoked. 
So what happens if you do not report CPE? Let's go through this example that they provide. For example, if an individual obtains the IIA certification in 2022, the first reporting needs to be completed by end of the year 2023. If you do not report CPE by the end of the year 2023, they will move you into a grace status for the next two years. If you do not report your CPE for a total of three years, the Institute of Internal Auditors will move your CIA status into a revoked status. So for two years, you have a, a grace period, but that third year and where you're still not reporting your CPE, you will be moved to a revoked status. That means that you are required to go through the testing requirements all over again. You have to register for the exam again, schedule your exams, pay for registration, pay for part one, take part one and pass. And remember, still all within those three years, you have to take all three parts within those three years again, part one, part two, and part three. And I, I am a certified internal auditor and I know how difficult it is to work full time or to study full time in college and to have to take three exams all over again. That is a lot. So I highly encourage you to stay on top of your CPE reporting or else your CIA license can be revoked. If you are new here, welcome to the Becoming Bossy channel. Be sure to like this video, subscribe, and talk to me in the chat room. Let me see what you are thinking about this new CPE policy change that was just implemented as of November 9th and is being in effect as of September 1st, 2023. Let me know what you think. So they provide even more scenarios down here. What, who is an active certified internal auditor, right? You are active if you report your CPE each year without skipping any years. If you report your, your required 40 hours of, sort of, of continued professional education every year consistently, no breaks in between, you will be recognized as an active certified internal auditor every year. That means you have all the benefits and privileges of being a certified internal auditor. You will be currently active as far as the IIA is concerned, and you may display your certification after your name. So you can have your credentials CIA after your name in any published documents such as magazines or on LinkedIn or in your email signature. You can have John Doe CIA. And this also means that you all you can also use the benefits of holding that CIA designation. And there are tons of benefits. CIA members get special discounts, get special recognition from their employers for being a CIA. You get promotion opportunities. You get, I mean, I bet you all are getting recruiters trying to find you on LinkedIn, trying to get you to come to their organizations because they value this certified internal auditor designation. And they know that it takes a lot to pass all three parts and it takes a lot to get the education requirements and the experience requirements that the IA has established. So the CIA designation is very valuable. So you want to be sure to remain in that active status to fully acquire the benefits of being a certified internal auditor. Next, if you are not in active status, that means that you are either in grace status or revoked status. Our goal is to be in active status, but if you do not report your 40 hours of CPE each year, you will either be in grace status or revoked status. So grace status, 
This means that you did not report your required CPE hours for the year and you are now in grace status. This means that you cannot, even if you are a certified internal auditor, you got your certification, you passed all your tests, the IIA gave you your certificate, everything. Even if you have all of that, you were once a CIA. If you do not report your 40 hours of CPE for even one year, you will be changed to a grace status, not active, but grace status. That means that you cannot display your certification after your name. You cannot be John Doe CIA. You cannot use the benefits of holding the IIA's designation. You must report required CPE to once again become an active certified internal auditor. So the IIA is, they're doing a great job of breaking down certification status and the requirements for reporting CPE. If you're with me today, make sure that you are liking the video because I'm giving, I'm giving great knowledge about how you can remain active and in good standing with the Institute of Internal Auditors. This information is first, is from the first source, the actual Institute of Internal Auditors website, which you can see on the screen. So if you're curious about the policy changes, the IIA has published the new policy, and you can also refer to the current policy and see the changes for yourself. This policy goes into effect in 2023, September 1st, 2023. Now, let's talk about let's talk about revoked status. If you do not report required CPE after 3 years. So that means 2023, 2024, 2025, you do not report your continued professional education to the IIA. That means that your certified internal auditor designation is going to be revoked. And revoked is a strong word. That doesn't mean temporarily stalled or temporarily canceled. That doesn't mean that you're in a grace status. No. Revoked means, hey, you took these three parts of the exam. You had the education requirements. You had the experience requirements. However, you did not keep up with our established guidelines and rules. So we are revoking your status as a certified internal auditor. And now you must recertify. That means reapplying, reapplying into the program and passing all required examinations, including, this is the big part, Paying all of those exam fees, paying all those exam fees, and right now for sure, all of those exam fees, the study materials, that's going to be at least $1,000 US dollars that you'll have to pay again because you did not report your CPE after three years. So you have to reapply. And you cannot display those pretty three letters, CIA, after your name in any published materials, not on the LinkedIn profile, not on your email signature, not on any published magazine articles, not for any business organizations, not for conferences. You will just be John Doe, no longer John Doe CIA. So you do not want to be in grace status. You do not want to be in revoked status. Make sure that you get your extra hours. So if you are currently an active CIA certification holder, so you are a certified internal auditor right now, the IIA recommends that you continue completing your certification renewal each year before December 31st. 
And you may have the privilege of still having all those designation benefits and using CIA after your name. So you will be an active CIA. If in 2023, you, you become a person in grace status, that means that you will have to complete certification renewal before the end of 2023. So if in January, 2023, it says that you're in grace status, you must complete your certification renewal before the end of the year of 2023. You may not use your CIA designation because you are in grace status. You are not active. If you do not report your CPE by the end of 2024, you will be moved to revoke status on 2020. You be moved to re revoke status, and on January twenty twenty fifth, January two thousand twenty five, you'll be required to recertify. So you have two years of grace period, right? Individuals in grace status may not use their certification associated with the active status. If you do not report by December thirty first, twenty twenty four, you will be moved to revoke status. And that next year, 2025, you will be required to reapply and recertify. So remember, this policy is being taken into effect in 2023, September 1st, 2023. So it gives another scenario. In 2024, I moved into gray status for the first time. The IA says you must complete certification renewal before December 31st, 2024. Individuals in grace status may not use their certification associated with active status. If you do not report by December 31st, 20, 2025, your designation will be moved to revoked status. And you will be required to recertify. Now, we all know how expensive it can be to become a certified internal auditor. Right? So if you had hardship, and by this, the, the IIA is mentioning financial hardship. Financial hardship or some, some situation where you were, some for some reason, you were unable to obtain your 40 hours of continued professional ed education. There are opportunities to apply for an exemption. I'll repeat that again. If you are experiencing some kind of financial hardship or personal hardship, that means some sort of personal scenario or situation in which you are unable to fulfill and acquire the 40 hours of continued professional education, you can apply for an exemption. Exemption requests must be submitted prior to December 31st. However, you cannot solely say that you are experiencing hardship. You have to provide the required supporting documentation. Now, I'm not sure what the required supporting documentation may be, but it could possibly be showing that you were laid off, showing that you were fired, showing that you quit a job and you currently did not uh, acquire a new position, showing that you recently filed for bankruptcy, showing that you're currently in the midst of a lawsuit, 
something of that nature, I presume, this is becoming bossy saying this, not the Institute of Internal Auditors, but for some reason, if you have financial hardship or some personal situation that prevents you from acquiring your 40 hours of continued professional education, the IIA, Institute of Internal Auditors, is willing to work with you. However, you must submit supporting documentation that they require. Any questions about that? If you're with me, welcome to Becoming Bossy. Thank you so much for joining us. And please be sure to like this video because we're giving great knowledge about the new CPE reporting policy changes that will be in effect as of September 1st, 2023. So be sure to like this video. Go ahead, I'll wait for you to like the video to subscribe to the channel so that you can participate in our chat. All right. Here's another scenario. I have one active certification from the IIA and the other IIA certification is in expired status or in gray status in 23 or 24, the years 2023 or the years 2024. So let's say this person is a CIA, that's their one certification, and they're also another designation from the IIA. The IIA says that you have to complete your certification renewal before December 31st of each year for the active certification. So if your status is currently active for the CIA certification, you have to still complete your certification renewal for that year. And for your grade status certification, refer to the scenario above. So remember grade status, that's more than one year, that's one year or two years where you have not been reporting your CPE. You have no right to use that certification's credentials after your name. You do not have any right to use the benefits of that certification. Oh, I won't go into this one. You can read it, but this is not pertaining to the CIA. So we will skip that one. And they have other various scenarios about other designations that you may have acquired from the Institute of Internal Auditors. Lastly, I am in expired status in 2022 and or 2023. How can I move my designation to active status? Well, the new policy for reporting your continued professional education goes into effect on September 1st, 2023. Individuals will have the opportunity to reactivate the designation until the end of the year of 2023. However, however, starting at the beginning of 2024, you will no longer be able to reactivate the designation and recertification is required. That's important. Recertification is required. So this is saying, okay, right now is 2022. And I already have expired status. That means that for the past year, I have not been reporting my continued professional education like I should have, right? And now the IIA has put me into an expired status under the policy for 2022. However, 
since the new policy goes into effect on September 1st, 2023, if you do not submit your CPE by the end of 2023, starting on January 1st, 2024, you will no longer be able to reactivate the designation and you have to take those CIA exams all over again. So I hope that you all have been listening. I hope that you all are up to date on your CPE reporting requirements. If you are not, start now in 2022. Start in 2023 so that you do not find yourself in limbo trying to become active and the IIA re revokes your CIA status. All right? So get on board. Do what you have to do now to be in compliance with the new policy and avoid having to re-register for the CIA exam to reapply, right? To retake all one, two, three sections of the certified internal auditor exam. That is not fun. <laughs> that is not fun. And why is that not fun? Because guess what? Every year, something within the exam most likely will change. Every year, some part of the exam most likely will get a little more challenging, more difficult. And guess what? You probably won't be able to use the same study materials that you used previously when you first got your CIA designation. Now you might have to even purchase newer, updated, more current study materials to recertify and retake your exam. So if you have more questions, you can go to the IIA's website, which is www.theiia.org for frequently asked questions. And they have answers to all of this information. They have answers to all of this information. Are there any questions in the chat? If not, it's been a pleasure. Be sure to stay updated. The way to stay updated about any changes for the IIA, for your certified internal auditor designation, is to frequently check the Institute of Internal Auditors website. And if you are an IIA member, which I highly recommend, they should be sending you emails to inform you about any policy changes, standard changes, any exam changes, everything that is changing or that is new should be emailed to you. So make sure that you have an updated email address registered with the Institute of Internal Auditors. This is the official press release that was put out, published, by the IIA, November 9th, 2022. That was just last week, like just a few days ago. And it will take effect September 1st, 2023. So make sure that you are in good standing, that you are still qualified to be an active CIA member, an active CIA and this was their official press release. And it even says it in black and white, a certification in revoked status cannot be reinstated. An individual with revoked certifications will need to retake the exams. You have to retake all three sections of the exams. And
And why did they do this? Well, it says after a thorough review, the PCB decided to update the CPE reporting policy to align with credentialing best practices and maintain the credibility of the IIA's certification, such as Certified Internal Auditor. That's coming exactly from the Executive Vice President of the Global Standards and Certifications for the IIA. Continuing professional education is an opportunity for internal auditors to demonstrate their commitment to lifelong learning, which serves to benefit all certification holders, their employers, and stakeholders alike. As part of the changes, the CPE reporting policy will become known as the Annual Certification Renewal Policy on September 1st, 2023. For all certification holders from the IIA and all current candidates, so even if you are not yet a certified internal auditor, when you become one, this will apply to you as well. Individual certification holders who are currently in grace period or expired status cannot claim the certifications. They should follow the current continuing professional education policy to report CPE or reinstate their certifications before the new policy goes into effect. The Institute of Internal Auditors remains firmly committed to upholding the internal audit profession's reputation for providing objective assurance services in an objective and ethical manner. So there we go. If you have any questions about the press release, you can contact this person. At this email address and at this number. But thank you all for tuning in. This is big news for sure. Big, big, big news. Big, big news. So there you have it. If you have any questions about the CPE reporting policy, make sure that you ask me in the section below, the chat comments below. Um, I'll stay on for a few minutes and answer those questions. While I am doing that, I will share something else with you while we have a little bit of time. Ask your questions about the CPE reporting updates. Ask your questions in the chat section. And I will answer them for you if you have any. If you're still here, also please like the video to show your appreciation. I appreciate that. That shows that you are supporting the channel. You're supporting Becoming Bossy. So be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you are not yet a member. Let me know what you all think, because this is this is new news, right? This is this is new, starting 2023, September 1st, 2023. Twenty twenty three. Any questions there? So basically, for those who are just joining, thanks. Welcome to become bossy. We just went over in detail the twenty twenty three new policy, new continuing professional education reporting policy that will go into effect in twenty twenty three. This is all new.
all new. All right. I see one question. How many hours do we need yearly? Is it possible to achieve said requirements and for free? Because I get some CPE hours. I get some CPE hours for participating in workshops so far. All required fees for registration. Let me actually post this question up here. So Marvin Liss is asking us, how many hours do we need yearly? Is it possible to achieve said requirement in free? Because I get some CPE hours for participating in workshops. So far, all required fees for registration. I'm not sure what you mean by the last question, but I'll tackle the first two. So you asked me how many hours do we need yearly. Currently, the Institute of Internal Auditors is asking all certified internal auditors to obtain and acquire 40 or zero hours of continuing professional education, 40 hours. So roughly about three to four hours each month. That's not bad, right? To make sure that we are current on any profession trends that are happening, uh, we're up to date on all audit implementation strategies that may have changed from last year. We have the ethical compliance updates that the IIA may establish or that our profession establishes, right? So we are up to date on all audit methodologies. It's pretty simple. Just get your 40-hour requirement each year. Most companies actually allow you to let them know, hey, I want to get 40 hours of CPE this year to maintain my CIA active status. And many companies, if your designation aligns with your job responsibility, so let's say you are an internal auditor and you are also a certified internal auditor, they will most likely pay for your trainings and pay for you to attend workshops so that you can maintain your active status as a certified internal auditor. So answer the first question, you need 40 hours each year. You have to report 40 hours by the end of the year. By December 31st, every year, you should go to the IIA's website. And they may require you to go into the candidate portal, right? The CIA candidate portal. And you have to report at least 40 hours each year. Is it possible to achieve said requirement in free? I think the person is asking... Is it possible to get those 40 hours for free? I know many professional organizations and actually the IA is one of them. So there are so many professional organizations. You'd be, you'd be surprised. There are so many organizations that will actually host special programming, special workshops for you to attend for free. And they will still give you continuing professional education credit as well. So look into those. If you are not yet a member of the Institute of Internal Auditors, ask your company if they will sponsor you, if they will pay for you to become a member of the Institute of Internal Auditors. Because the IIA has programming year round throughout the year where they will allow their members to attend certain workshops throughout the year for free. And these are most likely webinars that are free. Now they also have in-person workshops that may require a small fee to get CPE credit. But you'll be surprised at how many different professional organizations actually allow you to attend their workshops and webinars for free and get continuing professional education. All right. And then Code Apple, I'm going to get to your question. But Marvin, let's you, your last question, can you clarify what you mean? It says, because I get some Coke or some CPE hours for participating in workshops so far, all required fee for registration. 
So I think you're saying that you've already earned CPE hours for workshops that you've already attended. So if you already have your 40 hours from those workshops, all you have to do now is report that continuing professional education by December 31st to remain an active CIA. Okay, He's, I think I've already answered this question, perfect. Okay, let's go back to cold apple seven. Not related to the topic, but just wanna hear your thoughts. I'm seven months. I'm assuming that means that you're seven months in as an internal auditor. So you've been working as an internal auditor for seven months. Is it too early or not to study for the CIA exam? Oh my gosh. Great question, Cole Apple 7. Guess what? I became, I started studying for the certified internal auditor exam when I had just entered the internal auditing profession. So in 2020, I went from external accounting. So from being a public accountant at a big four firm, I moved to industry being an internal auditor. Within two months of being an internal auditor, I knew that I wanted to, be, to earn the CIA designation. I knew I wanted to become a CIA. So I joined the internal audit profession in July, around July of 2020. By September, I went ahead and registered. I registered with the IIA to become a candidate. And I started studying. So it's never too early or too late to study to become a certified internal auditor. So you're seven months in. I'm sure that in seven months, you have already gained a lot of work experience where you are actually completing planning procedures. You're, you're completing fieldwork procedures. You may have already written your first report, right? So you have a general basis or a general knowledge of what an internal auditor does because you've been one for the past seven months. So no, it is not too early, never too late to become a certified internal auditor. Never too early, never too late to apply to become a certified internal auditor. And I even think that studying for the exam itself helps you become a better internal auditor. It helps you become better at your job because you're learning the formal rules and guidelines established by the Institute of Internal Auditors and you're also learning on the job as you're doing your internal audit work. So I hope that answers your question. Um, if you're on right now, be sure to like this video because I'm giving you great advice right now, right? Like the video, leave your questions in the chat section. Thank you all for subscribing. Only subscribers are allowed to comment right now. So be sure to like the video if your question was answered or if you're enjoying the content like the video and subscribe if you're not if you're not subscribed already. All right. I think Marvinless gave a example, he gave his his or her example. The comment says I entered in internal audit work on May 2020 and started CIA July 2020. Cleared it, that means pass the CP the CIA exams on September 29th, 2022. So yes, it's definitely fine to join in the 7 months of experience. So you heard it from me. You also hear it from Marvin Les. That person also started studying. He started, he or she started studying like two months, only two months after entering the internal audit profession and passed it within two years, like a little over two years. That's awesome. Congratulations, Marvelous. Cleared it in September. So it is certainly possible to join uh, within seven months of experience. So you can apply as a CIA candidate. You can start studying within months of beginning your internal auditor journey. Thanks, Marvin Liz, for that example. Another person says, not related to the topic, I am in South Africa. Wow, hello from South Africa. I'm so glad that you all are joining us. I am struggling to have access to Wiley. I think that person meant Wiley. So... 
Wiley, for those who don't know, Wiley is a company that actually publishes certified internal auditor information and study materials for aspiring certified internal auditors. So question for you. I'm going to call you Luthuli because I don't want to mess up your name. <laughs> Luthuli, uh, have you actually registered for and paid for your Wiley Access? And if you have already, I would recommend calling the customer service line so that you can get the required access that you need. And Marvelous says, congratulations to you too, Bossy. Your videos help so much. Oh, that's amazing. I'm glad that you felt that way, Marvelous. I am like happy that you all are actually finding value in these videos. I am joyful that I'm able to share such information with you all to keep you all updated and knowledgeable about everything that's happening in the industry, in our profession, and to help aspiring CIAs to actually become certified. So thank you, Marvin Liss, for the congratulations. So Luthuli, back to your comment, make sure that you are speaking with your customer service representative from Wiley so that you can study and you can have access to the test banks, the video lectures, or the study materials that you need to pass the three parts of the exam. If you are new, be sure to like this video and also subscribe to the channel so that you can comment and chat with me. I'm answering questions for everyone who's joining. So be sure to ask your questions in the chat section and I will get to your comments. So far, we went over all of the new reporting policy changes that are coming into effect in 2023, right? New policies that are going to be in effect in 2023. So be sure to stay tuned for that. One more thing. After you subscribe, if you would like to become a member of the channel, you can click the join button. You can join the channel to become a member to get exclusive membership perks. So there are three different tiers. You can join the, the Bossy Crew, Bossy Elites, or Bossy Supreme. And I try to make this as affordable as, affordable as possible. So the first level is $2.99. That means that you will get loyalty badges surrounding your name so that whenever you join the live chat, or whenever you comment on videos, these badges will appear next to your name whenever you come onto Becoming Bossy's page. We will also have member only, members only live chats where you can exclusively talk to me, ask me your questions, just like people have asked their questions already. Join the channel and get exclusive members only live chats so that you can interact with me personally, just like this. I'm, this is live. <laughs> I'm talking to you right? I'm giving you all shout outs on these videos. I'm putting your comments up on the screen so that everybody else can also benefit from your great questions. And the other perk is that I will reply to your comments. You'll have higher priority over other commenters. So if I see that you have these badges around your name and you have a question, I'll be sure to comment and reply to your question first. The next level is becoming bossy elite. That means that you'll get early access to new videos. So before I even publish them on YouTube, you will see them first before anyone else. You'll also get member shout outs in the community section and you'll get special members only polls in the community section as well. And then that's $4.99 a month. So pretty reasonable, affordable from $2.99 a month to $4.99 a month. And then ultimately we have Bossy Supreme. So you can join the channel, press the join button and actually become a Supreme member. And there are so many perks of that one too. So not only you'll still get the loyalty badges, you'll get the members only lives, you'll get the priority response to your comments. You'll get everything that is included in Bossy Crew, Bossy Elite. And on top of that, you'll also get be able to connect with me on social media. So make sure that you follow me on Instagram at becomingbossy. 
you and I will have the ability to interact or maybe even get on a Zoom call and actually talk. And you'll get special photos and status updates directly from me on the community tab. So subscribe to the channel, that's free. But if you want to go above and beyond, you can also join the Bossy Crew, join the Bossy Elites, or join Bossy Supreme. That's my shameless plug right there. <laughs> Any other questions about CPE reporting, about the IIA exam while I'm here? Anything else? Thank you all for joining. Be sure to click the like button. I see zero likes right now. Is that correct? Let's get to some likes. I'm going to see some likes, guys. I see three likes. Okay, good. But there are six people in here. So let's get it up to five or six, please. Like the video. All right, I see we have another question coming in. Let's get to it. Cold Apple has another question. The person says, since I have no background in FNA or external or internal auditor related experience before, so CIA exam, especially accounting part, truly sounds scary to me. So it sounds like this person does not have any finance or accounting experience or does not come from a finance and accounting background, nor are they, uh, nor do they have any external or internal auditor related experience other than the seven months. Is that right, Cold Apple? So the person is expressing that passing the CIA exam seems particularly difficult, especially since there's that financial management domain or section in uh, part three. So that's a fair, that's a fair, uh, thoughts and concern, cold apples. So I definitely can sympathize with you. However, one thing to consider is first question that I have for you, do you plan to be in the internal audit profession for a while? So for, so for the next three to five years or more, do you still plan to be in internal audit? He says, he or she says, yes. So I would say that getting the certified internal auditor designation would benefit you. I think you can agree with that, right? It would benefit you. Since you have no financial, uh, financial accounting or finance background experience, it may be a little more challenging, but I will tell you it's not impossible. And I say that because the CIA exam does not go into a highly detailed level of understanding for accounting. This is not the CPA exam. Remember that. This is not the certified public accountant exam. For that exam, you need a, a pretty detailed, thorough knowledge of accounting. For the CIA exam, you just need a general high level basic understanding of accounting. And remember, like Marvin List says, the accounting part is only in part three. The accounting part is only in part three. So you can still study for part one, study for part two and pass those because those explore the general, the general areas of internal audit. They give you the foundation, the essentials, the basic skills of being a great internal auditor. So they, they walk through like the planning process, field work process, reporting process, they, they cover the IIA's professional standards, which you may already know. You may already know about objectivity, integrity, about how the IIA internal auditors add value to their organization, how you have to be objective to provide a reasonable assurance, right? Surrounding the controls, the risk management process, governance. So you probably can pass parts one and two without that accounting knowledge, right? So don't let that hinder you. Now for part three, by the time you even get to part three, you will probably already have one to two years of internal audit experience under your belt. So during your internal audit work, you will already probably be learning to some extent something about accounting 
whether it's basic or whether it's detailed, you'll you'll get that on the job training. So you'll be ready to take part three by the time that comes around. And Marvelous says exactly. And Marvelous said that accounting part is only in part three. And I got maybe 10 to 20 questions only. So don't allow that to hold you back. And only one question requires calculation. The others were theoretical. I that was his that was his or her experience. That was Marvelous experience. I cannot say how many questions require detailed calculations or journal entries, but even the IIA will tell you which sections require a basic level of understanding and which sections require a proficient level of understanding, right? So if you look at your syllabus for each part one, part two, part three, the IIA does a wonderful job of telling you whether well, you need a basic level of understanding or a proficient level of understanding. So, and also financial management right now, that's the last section of part three. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, that's only about 20%. That's only one fifth or 20% of the actual total score. So even if you don't do super well on the accounting part, you can still pass part three and become a certified internal auditor. So code Apple, I hope that answered your questions. If anyone else can answer that question, comment in the chat section below to help code Apple out. If you're new, make sure that you like the video, subscribe to be able to chat with me and ask me specific questions about whatever you have questions about. Earlier in this live chat, you can rewind and start over again and listen to my commentary about the CPE reporting policy changes that are coming into effect in 2023. I presented this earlier. New things are changing about the CPE reporting policy for 2023. And this is all on the IIA's website. The reporting policy is changing. I had detailed discussions about what exactly is changing and how you can renew your certification each year. And the IIA does a great job of actually showing people what is changing. High level, we already went into a deep discussion about this, but high level, uh, the grace period increased from one to two years. So you cannot go longer than three years without reporting your, your continuing professional education or your certification will be revoked and you will have to be re, you will have to be recertified as a certified internal auditor again. You will have to actually retake all three parts of the exam again to become a certified internal auditor. So it's, it's a, it is pertinent, it is vital, it is essential, it is mandatory. I am telling you, you have to report your CPE. And someone asked earlier, right now the requirement is 40 hours of CPE that you have to, you have to acquire each year and report by December 31st to the Institute of Internal Auditors. Or you could risk not being able to include CIA after your name and not having all the benefits and privileges of being a certified internal auditor. So I've covered that in great detail. At this time, I want to actually answer your questions. And Cold Apple says, thank you both for such kind encouragement. You are welcome, Cold Apple 7. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for liking the video. Thank you for subscribing. And remember, you can join the channel as a member and get special benefits and privileges. You can get special loyalty badges beside your name. If you click the join button below this video, you can join Bossy Elite or the Bossy Crew or Bossy Supreme. Any other questions about this? If not, I'll wrap it up because we've gone for a while. <laughs> and you can finish the rest of your day or evening.
I'll do a one minute countdown for any other questions. All right, I think everyone has their question answered. I plan to go live again this Saturday. So tune into that where we'll discuss even more. Just turn on your post notifications so you can see when I go live and when I upload new content. I actually enjoy going live because I like answering your questions rather than just posting a video and then seeing your comments days or weeks later. I like being able to interact with you all in real time as I'm sharing information. This person said, thank you, Bossy. You are so welcome. All right. As always, stay blessed and stay Boss C.